Well, good morning, Zion Wayside. It's good to see you once again. Uh, we are especially happy today uh, because we have, are just coming off of the announcement, the big unveiling uh, of our reopening plan to gather right here in our sanctuary again. And so this is the, the last time that we will be uh, worshiping in this way uh, through the, uh, the technology and resources that we have online. And we look forward to seeing you right here in our building next week on June 7th. So today we invite you to, to join us for communion from 8 a.m. to noon. So if you're watching this service, uh, feel free to, to come by our church afterwards and, and come through and receive communion. And then on next Sunday, the 7th, we'll be having our worship services, 745, 930, and 11 o'clock. And all the details of how we're handling the, the safety and the social distancing can be found in the comments below. Or if you uh, look on our website or our Facebook page and see the video that we released, also detailing some of those steps that we are taking. We want to be as, as safe and careful as we can uh, while still gathering here together. Uh, now there is still another option. Um, if you're not quite ready to, to gather in a big group and, and be inside this building, uh, with others, we are providing an opportunity for you to still receive uh, confession and absolution and communion. And so that will be Wednesdays beginning June 10th from 4.30, or I'm sorry, from 4 to 6.30. So Wednesdays beginning June 10th from 4 to 6.30. And you can come as an individual or as a family um, to our sanctuary, receive communion, and then be on your way. And we'll keep that going for as long as we need to as well. We're also excited because uh, this Wednesday, our 8th grade class will be celebrating their graduation service right here as well. And so we congratulate them, and we'll hold them in our prayers this morning too. So as we prepare uh, to gather and celebrate through these means of technology, we prepare our hearts and minds as we go to our God in prayer. So please pray with me. Lord God and Father, we once again thank you for your faithfulness faithfulness in times of prosperity, faithfulness in times of adversity, faithfulness in whatever lies ahead. Lord, we ask that you would prepare our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit to whoever may be watching us, that you would prepare the hearts and minds of those who lift up your praises and preach your word, that your word may go out and faith may be strengthened. Lord, we pray and gather in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now begin with our opening song, This is Amazing Grace. unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you down your life that I would be set free Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me unfailing love 
that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You laid down your life that I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. As we prepare to confess our sins, we hear these words that are written in God's word, and they're from 1 John chapter 1. He reminds us, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And hearing those words, let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And now hear God's words and promise of forgiveness for you. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now as we hear from God's word. Our first reading for this morning is taken from Numbers chapter 11. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Mendad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, 
Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them? And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is taken from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of our Holy Gospel, which is taken from John chapter 7. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, 
Out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit has not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Now continue with our song of the day, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. of every blessing tune my heart to sing thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise while the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, bought me with his precious blood. to grace how great a debtor daily i'm constrained to be let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee prone to wander lord i feel it prone to leave the god i love Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, today we are celebrating the festival of Pentecost. And this is a festival that goes a long, long, long way back in the history of the church and in the history of God's people. In fact, it goes all the way back to the days of Moses, if you can believe that, as Pentecost was the festival that they celebrated 50 days, hence the name Pentecost cost after the Passover, the Passover being the day that God delivered his people from Egypt. But now, as we heard in our epistle reading for this morning in Acts chapter 2, we get another reason to celebrate Pentecost. This is the day that the Spirit was poured out on the apostles as they gathered in that room together. And as we heard in Acts chapter 2, the apostles were gathered in one place, and a sound like rushing wind came through and filled their house, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Tongues of fire. 
tongues as of fire. That's going to be our theme for uh, this morning, our sermon this morning. And our text obviously is is referring to the physical or visual appearance of a tongue, a little flame showing above the apostles' heads. But we're going to talk about it in a little bit of a different way. Because there were a lot of words spoken on this day of Pentecost. People speaking with tongues as of fire. The apostles spoke inspired words by the Spirit with tongues as of life-giving fire. There's another group that also speaks with tongues as of fire in a different way. So what we're going to do is shed some light on that and apply it to our modern day way of living and how we as Christians are to echo the apostles and speak with tongues as of this life-giving fire in light of a world that speaks in a different way. So, first of all, I just want to establish this. Wow, what an incredible thing to witness. Could you imagine being there in Jerusalem on that day of Pentecost? Even before we get to the miraculous things that take place, this would have been a tremendous sight to see. As we heard, this is a day of great celebration, the festival of Pentecost, and people from all over the world are coming to Jerusalem to celebrate it together. People from nations near and nations far. People from various different backgrounds, people from different cultures, people who had different native languages, different native tongues, all gathering together to celebrate this festival in Jerusalem. That is an incredible scene right there in itself. I don't know if you've ever been on a vacation or to um, some really big tourist attraction and you kind of look around and you observe your surroundings and you see people from places you've never been. You hear people talking in so many different languages and you don't really know what's going on. If you've ever found yourself in a situation like that, it's kind of incredible. You feel so small. You're such a small part of this gigantic world. It's really an incredible feeling. That's what it would have been like there in Jerusalem. And then you add on top of that, in a moment, all of these people from different backgrounds and different languages begin to hear a common voice. But they're hearing that common voice in their own native language. That's a miracle. That's the work of God. That's the work of of the Holy Spirit being poured out on the apostles, that they can speak inspired words with tongues as of fire, a life-giving, faith-filled fire. And the people hear it. And, And what is their reaction? Chapter two, verse seven tells us, And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? They get it. They see that something incredible is happening. They see that these men before them should not be speaking in a way that they can understand. That's clear to them. They're Galileans. And yet they hear in their own language native tongue, as the apostles speak with tongues as of fire. Then there's the other group. There's another group of people who are witnessing the same things that the others are witnessing. They're hearing these incredible things that are happening, but they have a different reaction. Verse 13, but others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. So even in the midst of this miracle, there are those who observe it, those who see it, those who hear it, those who are are a part of it, and they just simply dismiss it. 
They dismiss it. They don't see it for what it is. They set it aside. And you know what? Maybe it's even a little more than that. You see, they too are speaking with tongues as of fire. But this isn't a fire that provides. This isn't a, a, a life-giving fire. This isn't a fire that, that burns with the desire to serve. This is a fire that burns as the desire for the self. They set all of this aside and say, they must be drunk. They speak with tongues as a fire that burns. And this is a speech that we are all too familiar with in our day and age today, in our culture, in our way of living. So many people in our society have, have grown up with or even been taught that this is how we talk to other people and specifically people who don't really agree with us. We can see that right now as we live in a time that is incredibly volatile and change is taking place seemingly each and every hour as the clock moves. And with all of this change happening, there's so many different opinions and thoughts being thrown out there on how we are to move forward in the midst of this unforeseen event taking place. That's a good thing. That's a good thing to have different viewpoints and, and different ideas. But how do we respond? How do we speak to someone who has a different opinion than me? A lot of times we speak with tongues as of fire that burns. We speak with judgment. We challenge their integrity just because they disagree with us. As I'm saying it, it almost sounds kind of silly, kind of childish. But is this not the way that our world has been working? We speak with tongues as a fire and we destroy these relationships. These relationships are left behind us in the ashes. You see, this is not how we were called to speak to one another. And this is not how the apostles are speaking. This is not how Peter is going to speak. You see, the Holy Spirit was poured out to the apostles that they may speak with tongues as of fire, inspired words, words given to them by God so that all may hear it, faith-filled words. Well, what does that mean? What, what story does that tell? Well, the text tells us what those words were. Verse 11 says, We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. The apostles were simply telling the story. They were telling the story of how great their God is and the mighty things that their God has done for his people ever since the beginning. They told the story of how God created all things, including his most beloved creation, us, people. They told the story of how when even sin and death entered into the world, God did not dismiss his people, but rather he made a promise. He made a promise that he was going to send someone to solve these problems. They told the story of how God provided great leaders for his people with men like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They told the story of how God delivered his people from the hands of the Egyptians through Moses. They told the story of how God preserved that first promise through the words of the prophets. And now, now they tell the story of the mightiest act of God. God himself came down from heaven as true God and true man. Jesus, he was here. He was with us. And Jesus, he, he spoke with a tongue as of fire. He spoke words of repentance. 
He spoke words of change. He spoke words of turning around. He spoke with the words like, go and sin no more. But he always followed those words, words of forgiveness, with words of love, with words of peace. Jesus spoke with a tongue as of life-giving fire. But there's more to it than that. Because you see, Jesus actually lived out those words. Those words are part of who Jesus is. Jesus put those words into action. And he did so by laying everything down. By laying down his own life and going to the cross. For the sake of others. For the sake of the world. For the sake of our forgiveness. And yet, even though he suffered death, to this day, Jesus lives. Jesus lives and has given us a great gift, the gift of his spirit. The gift of his spirit that he gave to the apostles on this day of Pentecost. He's also given that gift to us we too might speak words as of a life-giving, faith-filled fire. And so, I speak to you and say, go. Go. Go out and speak those words. Speak those words of repentance. Speak those words of forgiveness. Speak those words of respect, of love, of peace, because our world needs to hear it. And most of all, practice what we preach. Put those words into action. Let those words be a part of who we are as the church. Let us be a beacon of light in the midst of all the darkness. Let us tell others of what Jesus has done. Let us do as the apostles did and speak of the mighty works of God. Let us bring hope. Let us bring hope in the resurrection that is yet to come. Let us go and live and speak with tongues as of life-giving, faith-filled fire. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We now join together in confessing our one true faith in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. At this point in our service, we are again reminded of the good and great gifts that God provides us with. Um, Even in the midst of chaos, God's gifts are sure and certain. I want to thank you on behalf of everybody here at Zion Wayside and the ministry that has continued here for your generous gifts that the Lord has given to you that you have shared with us. It has allowed us to do many things, including uh, deliver to you God's word through means like this uh, online or a gathering for drive-in services. Uh, it's helped with resources during the school during this time that, that our children have continued to be brought up in the way of the Lord, um, and it has... Uh, been a generous and and great gift from you. And I want to encourage you in that. Um, Online, there are options available. The number is also available through text as well as mailing in offerings. 
um, or even bringing them by the office uh, yourself. So thank you again. And we now gather our offerings and tithes for the Lord. Let us now pray on behalf of all people who are in need. Lord God, we gather as your church today on the Feast of Pentecost. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, which has stirred faith in our hearts. May the gift of your Spirit go out from us as well. And so stir the hearts of faith in those that you have called around us. May we be faithful and bold in the proclamation of of the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus, so that more may call on you as Lord and so be saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up all of our thanksgivings for your sure and certain promises. Lord, we thank you for the way that you have provided for the ministry here through these uncertain times. And Lord, we thank you for the gift of marriage given to Ron and Bev Kikefer as they celebrate their 60th wedding anniversary this week. Lord, may you continue to grant them health and your blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the gift of a school and the family and children that participate in this ministry growing in the name of our Lord and in all the skills that you have blessed them with. Lord, we especially pray for our eighth grade class as they celebrate graduation this week, that you would bless them in whatever endeavors lie ahead, that the faith which has been brought about in this place would be with them wherever they may go. Lord, we pray for Camden Durachik, Aubrey Freeboth, Maverick Isley, Logan Lodel, Caleb Lupnow, Aiden Siebel, and Adler Stren. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have ordered all things in heaven and on earth. Bless Donald Trump, our president, Tony Evers, our governor, the Congress of the United States, and all elected and appointed civil servants, that the rule of law may protect the weak, preserve life from conception to its natural end, and peace may reign for the benefit of all. And you have given our nation the gift and heritage of freedom. It came at the cost of many lives on battlefields far and near. We lift before you now those who currently serve in our military. We pray for Jaron Petrie, Tony Abbott Jr., Derek Rosenbaum, Daniel Grove, Seth Borkert, Gavin Grayler, Mark Sanger, Jacob Welty, and Jordan Malezova. Receive our thanks for their sacrifice and give them courage to preserve liberty in our own time that we may use it honorably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you carry the burdens of our lives in your hands. Deliver from illness and suffering all who cry to you for release. Hear us on behalf of the sick, the dying, and those who mourn. We bring before you, especially Gail Bartelt, Tom Bailing, Tim Bettinghoff, Carol Borkert, Lily Crystal, Judy Eichhurst, Josephine Hasmer, Hudson Hill, Jerry Hoyer, Jeff Lupnow, Norman Olt, Lisa Reese, Ron Schrader, Dave Timas, Willow Van Vonderen, and Carl Veldhusen. Lord, we pray that you also are with Gloria Hintz as she has surgery this week that you would guide all those tending to her and all would go according to plan. 
O Lord, answer your people and deliver them from their infirmities and their grief by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, have mercy and spare us. Put an end to the pandemic and restore the communities of the world to their common life. You hear your people for the sake of him who loved us even to death and who lives to call all to himself that they may be saved. You know what we need and those things we should ask in your name. Grant them to us for the sake of our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now trusting in the promises of your risen Son, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive with believing hearts the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We now close with our song once again. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. You became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of life, and I'm in that place once again. I'm in that place once again. Once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you Amazed for you would pour out your life Now you are exalted to the highest King of the heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at this saving grace, and I'm full of praise once again. I'm full of praise once again. Once again, I look upon the cross where you died. Humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you Amazed that you would pour out your life Once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you Amazed that you would pour out your life Thank you for the cross Thank you for the cross Thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend.